Hi, this is Shadi, and today we're visiting an MMA fight between a judoka and an MMA fighter. It's very reminiscent of the old UFC, where you see the style in its, uh, I would say, most purest form, and it's being presented beautifully. So here today we're going to see how very classical judo can take you a very long way, similar to Hickson and Hoyce uh, in the old days. So this video was uploaded by a channel called Judo Chop. And they said this is one of their early fights. So if they are watching and they can provide more information about their career or their fights or this particular event. Please let us know down below because this is an amazing fight. So the fight starts. The MMA fighter immediately goes in relying on his striking, his 1-2. The judoka catches the head, takes down with Uchimata and then proceeds to go into Neiwaza from there, particularly top position. Yokoshiro Gatame side control switches into Tate Shiho Gatame uh, isolating the arm. So let's see the takedown again. So you have the one, two, iron chin. The judoka grabs the head. He eventually or initially tries to go for Harai Goshi, but he steps over it and thus it turns into a uh, leg technique, Ashiwaza and Uchimata, and then grabbing the arm and the head using it to create kuzushi or unbalancing so uh, it doesn't have to be sleeve lapel as always or relying on the jacket as people say but it can be a hand around the waist or around the head as in koshiguruma but uh, on the bottom side you can do either you know a straight hip technique or as you can see here with uta abe launching uchimata while circling at the head of koher and taking the arm with her so and then from there he goes into Yoko Shiho Gatame or side hold, uh, what we call uh, in Jiu Jitsu side control. And from it he, you can switch to Tate Shiho Gatame or um, mount position. Notice how he isolates the arm uh, similar to the fight that we just saw. So it's a very classical form of Tate Shiho Gatame. Again, this fight is very important because it shows everything in its classical slash purest form and hooks the legs or you can have to you can just push the legs together with your own feet as you see here the veteran judoka doing or you can just lace them with your own legs so it continues here you can actually get a strangle because you have what is called the arm triangle but um as he is striking him he's probably making him uncomfortable so he gets up eventually and proceeds to ground and pound as you are seeing here he tries to get uh, a juji gitame or an armbar but the mma fighter rolls with the momentum of the judoka and escapes it so he ends up in his open guard tries to get it here from guard the mma fighter stands up the judoka does as well grabs both legs puts his head between his legs to protect it which is i, I would say it's a good idea reaps away circularly to uh, the backside to get the takedown so this is a classical morotegari you don't actually lift with morotegari but rather you dive in and reap the legs towards you to get the takedown if you scoop upwards like a big lift i would say it qualifies more as a skuinage or a scooping throw so here now he is in his guard he's keeping his head close and eventually will try to pass the MMA fighter's guard. So what he does is tilts his weight to the side so he can get his leg on the ground and from there does like a knee slice. So let's see it. He is still in his guard, isolates the arm so he doesn't strike him and then goes to the side and gets the leg free and hops over it with like a knee slice and gets into side control again Look, he's trying to grab at the arm with both of his arms. He's isolating it for Ude Garami or arm entanglement. So there's many forms to this. There's this one, which is the basic form uh, where the arm is curled in, uh, double wrist lock, and you lift your elbow up so you can target the shoulder. So this is the basic form. You can also do it inverted, um, which we will see it here in a few seconds. So this is the basic form. You lift your elbow up to apply the lock. And here you have what is called the Kimura. Uh, it's the same one but inverted. So instead of having the fist upwards, it's downwards. 
and applying pressure on the shoulder but this one you have to actually lift the shoulder up to apply the lock while the other one you have to, you actually have to lift the elbow to apply the lock on the shoulder here you can see it's the same arm entanglement but it's inverted and also you can do it with the arm stretched out but it's actually targeting the elbow you do the same by lifting your own elbow uh, off the ground and getting the pressure on their elbow in order to get the finish so here the arm is stretched out it's curled either upward or downwards it's a very versatile arm lock so eventually it doesn't get it switches to mount position the mma fighter gets like a like a not a deep half but uh, like a quarter guard or half guard i'd say it's more of a half guard uh, is there such a thing as a quarter guard because like when you grab only the ankle i've heard people say it so please let me know down below so here he is on top not so much comfortable since he has his leg taken and then eventually gets an arm isolated and gets his leg free tries to fight but eventually will go to one of your classical locks which is the udehishigi juji getame which is the straight arm bar and gets the finish so this is juji getame Ronda Rousey made it very famous, Hicks and Gracie as well. One of the first arm locks that you will ever learn in BJJ and Judo, but it works at the highest level till this day. So um, the point is to use your hips as fulcrum. You extend your hips, putting pressure on the elbow. The thumb should be upwards and thus breaking the elbow or breaking the arm. Uh, Hoist Gracie also used it on top. And of course, from guard as well. Uh, off his back, Hoist fought greatly in the early UFC days here. He gets the tap off of his back. So you can see that the classical elements of judo are not only aesthetically pleasing, but also they can win at every level, even till this day at the highest level of UFC and all these MMA organizations. But this one here in particular, this fight, you see all the classical or purest forms of every position even the Tati Shio Gatame, how he hooked the legs, isolated the arms. Uh, this is what it looks like uh, when we're first learning it. And to see it here being applied um, in a not so much judo environment, but an MMA environment is very good to see. And I like to see the basics being applied uh, in their purest forms uh, in any context possible. So uh, if you have anything else to add, please let me know down below. Also, consider supporting me on Patreon. I have exclusive content for the patrons only um it's like behind the scenes full podcast etc but my main content will always be on the channel here so please don't feel obliged this was shady and thank you for listening